The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus left Gennesaret and withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Then out came a Canaanite woman from the district and started shouting, Sir, son of David, take pity on me. My daughter is tormented by a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples went and pleaded with him, Give her what she wants, they said, because she's shouting after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman had come up and was kneeling at his feet. Lord, she said, help me. He replied, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the house dogs. She retorted, ah, yes, sir, but even house dogs can eat the scraps that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, woman, you have great faith. Let your wish be granted. And from that moment, her daughter was well again. This is the Gospel of the Lord. So we're still with this very important story of the Exodus, such a a foundational story uh, in the Old Testament, which helps us to understand something of God and who God is for us and how it is that God uh, interacts and engages with us in our everyday lives. Uh, But it's also an important story for understanding ourselves and how we uh, tend to respond and, and, and the challenges that we, we tend to face in the life of faith. Uh, today, in this, we're at the point where uh, God's people are on the edge of the promised land, right? He, he led them through this you know, great long journey, many amazing feats God had, had made happen uh, to bring them to this point where uh, now they were ready. They just had to cross over into the promised land, right? And so Moses uh, sends 12 men just to do a bit of a reconnaissance mission, just to make sure that they know what they're, you know, they're, they're kind of heading into and, and uh, they can be well prepared. We're not exactly sure why he sent these 12 men, right? But it, it It'd be a fair guess that uh, God was just testing to make sure that his people were trusting in him, yeah? Because as they moved into the promised land, God made it known to them that they would have to overcome some nations, right? It wasn't going to be all smooth sailing, but the Lord would be with them, as the Lord always had been with them. Uh, But they needed to trust if that was going to happen. So I suppose God was sending these 12 men just to to suss out, are they they going to trust me? And anyway, so these 12, these are not ordinary men, these are leaders, right? They go into the land of Canaan. They spend 40 days there and then they come back and they give their report. And that's what we heard today. Uh, The first thing they say was, yes, God is right. This is a land flowing with milk and honey. And here, here is some produce we brought back with us, right? They didn't have any quarantine issues back then. They just, you know, just brought it straight back with them. Uh, But then they go on. They say, yes, but, but. The inhabitants there are powerful people. And the towns are fortified and very big. Yes, and we saw the descendants of Anak there. Yes, God, but. You ever do that with God? Yes, God, I'll follow you, but. (laughs) Yes, I will do this thing for you, but. (laughs) Caleb, of course, uh, then kind of spoke up and he says, yes, we can do it. We can do this. God has been with us all the way. Can you not see what he's done for us? We can do it. And then the people, the other 12, the other 11, they respond, oh, but no, we can't do it. You know, and then they start to exaggerate, don't they? You hear what they say? They said, oh, um, we, they devour their people. <laughs> And they're like giants, these people. We're like grasshoppers compared to them. Do you ever do that? Sometimes when you're caught up in fear and you 
you start to exaggerate things when you think about things. It gets worse and worse and worse, and, and suddenly you're absolutely paralysed. And that's what's happening here. They're paralysed. They're before the promised land, and they're paralysed. God had done all these amazing things for them, and they're paralysed. Why? Because they got stuck in their thoughts and in their fears. And, and, and the, the most distressing thing about this whole story is because of their lack of trust, they did not enter the promised land. Only Caleb and Joshua, of all the hundreds of thousands of, of people who had escaped Egypt. So I, I think in these stories, it's a bit of a um, wake-up call for us. Yeah, that God can't, we can't access what God wants for us if we, can't, if we don't trust. He, God's not going to force us onto it, uh, you know, into the promise. We need to be able to trust. And so the first, the first response for us when we notice our lack of trust is just to repent and say sorry to God, you know. To ask for God's mercy, thankfully we can be assured of that. So, sorry God for, for my lack of trust. But then, of course, the call is to trust. God's constantly calling us into his promise. He's calling us towards himself. Right? And, and almost always that requires us to move outside of our comfort zone, to do things that we don't necessarily you know, feel 100% happy about or, or comfortable with. Maybe, maybe it's something as simple as talking to someone next to you on the well, we don't sit on planes anymore, do we? <laughs> on the bus or <laughs> some stranger. And you just feel God saying, speak to this person. And everything's in you. Oh, no, what they might say or they might reject me. Or, <laughs> or sharing your faith with someone. You know, we can get paralyzed with fear sometimes, can't we? But just sort of acting on the grace. Or maybe it's something a bit more significant, like a change in career. Or, or I mean, who knows? It could be a million ways that God's calling us to himself. The important thing is that we, we, we act on the grace. We had a beautiful image of it, Peter, yesterday in the boat, didn't we? You know? Uh, he, he, he felt something within Peter felt like he needed, Jesus was on the water and he wanted to come out with Jesus. The grace was there and Peter said yes to the grace and, and out he went. And of course, he, he did fail in trust eventually, but the point is he acted on the grace. Sometimes if we think through things too much, we get stuck and in that paralysis kind of, you know, uh, and, and we don't do anything. So, uh, yes, we need to discern. We need to think through things well. We need to make decisions when we're kind of in a good mindset. We need to seek wi you know, the wisdom of others. But when the grace is there, we've also got to act on it. God won't give us the grace forever, I don't think. Uh, we need to act on it when, when we give it. So, so let's pray for that, that, that um, part of trust today. And if you're struggling to trust, if you really, if that's, you know, if you're just really, really struggling to, to say yes to God, uh, just pray for that grace. Just, just ask, ask the Lord. Um, Lord, help me, help me to trust in you. Give me, give me that grace to say yes.